The cherry-headed conure, a green parrot with a cute red head, originates and predominantly resides in the jungle of Peru and Ecuador in South America. But what the hell are these exotic birds doing in downtown San Francisco, about 6,000 kilometers away from home? Naturally, these cherry-headed conures are terrified of loud noises and humans, so they hide away from the loud traffic, construction, and noisy pedestrians. So if you were to try and find one of these pairs out and about, you'd have to either have a ton of luck or the eyes of an eagle. Since I'm allegedly not an eagle, I tried out my luck. Being a San Francisco resident, I went downtown to try and find myself a wild cherry-headed conure. So we're currently on the way to uh, Greenwich Street, which is gonna lead us straight up to Coit Tower. And within that journey from Greenwich Street to Coit Tower, we might see some parrots. To begin, San Francisco is not a spot for migration for these specific parrots. Parrots are sedentary, which means they stay in an established range of a place for the entirety of their lives. The farthest range is about 300 kilometers. Plus, there are no native parrots in the United States territory, let alone in the state of California. At least, not anymore. The Carolina parakeet was hunted to extinction in 1918, and the thick-billed parrot was extirpated or rooted out or eradicated from the southwestern states. It's a little bit warm. But fortunately, the thick-billed parrot can still be found in abundance in Mexico, but are still incredibly endangered. Before the U.S. government banned the trade of wild exotic birds in 1992, the United States was the largest importer of these birds in the world. Around the 1980s, a group of four of these cherry-headed conures were spotted flying around in the Telegraph Hill area in San Francisco. No one exactly knows how those parrots got there. One story suggests a pet store was burned down. Another story says a delivery truck crashed. There are a few more stories, but a lot of these stories have many contradictions and missing information. What is known, however, is that the original four that were spotted had little bracelets on their legs, indicating that they were once captured. The neighborhood of Telegraph Hill sort of let these four be in the 80s and 90s, and in 2019, the flock grew up to 200. And throughout this time, these parrots were joined by more lost cherry-headed conures, and even some lost mitrid conures that are native to Peru and Argentina. It's a bit cold again. Although 200 may seem like a lot of birds, the area that these parrots live in is not only large, but it's dense with trees. And again, the loud sounds of traffic and construction and noisy pedestrians discourage the parrots from feeling safe and wanting to be visible. So no parrots yet, um, which is a bit unfortunate. I thought I was gonna see uh, maybe at least one or two, but um, we have one more place to check out and it's the uh, Sue Bierman Park uh, More near the ferry building kind of far from here, but close enough, but our last resort for some parrots So the plan now is to walk down Montgomery, so we're taking a right right here and We're gonna keep going down until we hit Washington Street and We're gonna take a left so Vamos, I guess That's so cringe. God I'm gonna be real, I'm having my doubts about these parrots, but again, we got one more place to go. If you guys wanna see more stuff like this, I'd much appreciate it if you guys liked and subscribed. Thank you for coming this far. Anyway, on with the journey. So we're walking down Washington Street right now, and um, I'm keeping a, a close eye on the canopies of these trees, because they're in and around these areas, and you, you could get lucky. <laughs> So, I've got my eagle eyes right now. Incidentally, the cherry-headed conure isn't exclusive to San Francisco. If anything, they are more abundant in Southern California, ranging from Los Angeles to San Diego. Populations of this species can also be found in Austin and Miami. In fact, wild parrots in general can also be found in those same areas, with the addition of New York City and Chicago. And it's all because of the popularity of the exotic pet trade in the 20th century. Immediately, that given fact might reduce the charm and mystique of these cherry-headed conures residing in San Francisco. And in a heartbeat, any narcissist and or asshole would love to tell you that these parrots aren't exclusive to the city just to make them feel better about themselves and ruin your vibe. And honestly, let them. Because remember, these parrots were able to withstand anything. These parrots were stronger than they thought. They've been taken out of their natural habitat and were thrown into the deep end of unknown territory. And somehow, they managed to flourish. Somehow, they kept pushing on. 
And that's you, dear viewer. Ignore all the loud noises of traffic and construction and the noisy pedestrians and just push on. Believe in yourself and push on. So, mission failed. We'll get him next time. Uh, no parrots. Um, but, you know, it's nice to know that these exotic parrots from South America do exist around these parts. Um, if you guys want to see a documentary about it, um, I'll put a link down in the description about it. It's very interesting. And then it came, around, came out around 2003. And um, I remember watching it in uh, elementary school. It was, really, it was really cool. I was like, why are there parrots <laughs> here in San Francisco? And um, yeah, it's really interesting. Don't mind the people playing uh, Ultimate Frisbee to my left, but um, yeah. And I'm definitely gonna be wondering about the parrots and uh, how they be doing <laughs> um, this springtime. So uh, thank you very much.